from the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrily Joyce. And good day to you. I'm Marilee Joyce, and this is Eye on Washington, the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic, fighting for Nevada and fighting for the West. We're going to look at one Nevada leader's work to make sure the priorities of the Silver State and other Western states are prioritized here on the Hill. And he is my guest today, of course, Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amadei. Thanks for having me, Bradley. Thanks for being here, sir. Well, when you request, uh, when you represent a small state with a small delegation, you need to have a big voice. And today on Eye on Washington, we'll learn about my guest's leadership role on a House organization dedicated to protecting and strengthening Western states. We'll find out why he's focused not just on passing new efforts, but also on undoing some laws on the books. And we'll learn about his work to protect the positive reputation of what he calls one of the most important bills to Nevada in recent memory. Well, in early March, House Western Caucus Chairman Paul Gosar laid, a, uh, laid out what he called a vision for the West. It spelled out the top priorities of the Western Caucus. That's a group of 66 members of the House that are focused on issues that matter most to Western states, issues including local and not federal control, energy independence, water rights, and Endangered Species Act modernization, among others. Well, my guess, the Congressman is the caucus vice chairman and among a 10-member leadership team. That vision spelled out for the Congress by the chairman shows the caucus is focused not only on implementing and advocating for legislation pushing its priorities, but also focused on undoing some recent efforts they deem harmful to Western states. And they are flying forward to achieve these two goals. If you visit the House caucus website, you will see federal, uh, several pages of press. Many Many of which announce both new bills and repeal efforts. And, you know, Congressman, we're going to look more at the, the mission and the background of the caucus a little later in the show. But for now, I just want to say I have been all over the site and I have noticed, I don't know how else to say this, a palpable excitement among your members. You go to a lot of caucus sites and there's not much going on. There are dozens of bills on your site that you guys are yeah. uh, involved in, riled up about, excited about, etc. Tell us about this caucus. Well, uh, Chairman Gosar has taken uh, has taken the organization the next step. Cynthia Lummis from Wyoming was the previous uh, chairperson, um, and and Paul ran for the chairmanship actually against me uh, among others. And I got to tell you, a little ways down the road, uh, I wasn't too thrilled about not being the chairman at the time. But you I think he's vote. doing he's doing a heck of a job. And so. Um, he's concentrated on messaging, trying to open up our footprint in terms of what the issues are, expanding membership, and is doing uh, an outstanding job. You know, I did notice uh, some of the excitement is aimed at undoing some Obama-era legislation. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, a, a lot of it deals around process. You know, I don't think there's anybody out there, although you get plenty of spin that somebody's pro or anti-resource. Uh, but the problem is, is in the last administration, there was a lot of stuff done that was that was off the radar screen as far as the process, whether it's rulemaking, whether it's statutes, whatever it is. And so we've concentrated a lot on trying to say, uh, for instance, monuments or things like that, uh, EPA issues. Like, listen, if that's where you actually think we need to end up, that's fine. But there is a procedure that gives all interested parties a due process in rulemaking or the, or the legislative process, and, and that was ignored in many instances, and so we're trying to fix that. And I think you said some of the <coughs> things passed during that era were actually detrimental to Western states. Well, it, it wasn't that they were passed. I mean, people have been talking about gridlock, but, but they were rules that were put into effect without the full uh, uh, protections of the rulemaking process. Uh, or uh, executive decisions that were made without any process. And so, yeah, they were detrimental. And, and it kind of gets back into the thing that you said, which is the locals 
want and are entitled to some say when you talk about land use in their in their places. And, and, and speaking of that, you know, when we consider how Western states, uh, how their issues might differ from the issues of, of other states, what unites Nevada and the West as far as some of the federal priorities it has? Well, I think, first of all, you've got a, a ton of federal ownership in the West. So, so the federal government as a landowner is probably the primary player. They sure as heck are in Nevada with, you know, 85, 6 percent ownership between one agency and another. So when you talk about the West and you look at that map that shows uh, where federal ownership is and what the percentage is, Marilee, it's like, let, let me tell you what, they're the majority owner. And, and so as the majority owner uh -huh. um, that doesn't have planning and zoning authority, that's local county commissions and city councils, you expect a pretty high degree of working together and collaboration and communication, and we don't always get that. Huh. You know, uh, we're always hearing about the independent thinking of, of, of Westerners or, or self-reliance, you know, those types of uh, phrases that, that come to mind. What do you see as commonalities among your, your members, uh, your fellow members on the caucus? You know, here's an, an, an answer that will interest you. I think everybody is uber-focused on resource issues, no matter what side of the fence you're on. Where the disagreement comes is how you go about meeting those. And once mm. again, we get back to that process sure. where if you don't involve the locals, you don't involve the stakeholders, should you talk to people who are concerned about horses? Yes. Should you talk to cattle grazers? Yes. Should you talk to miners? Yes. Should you talk to sportsmen conservationists? Yes. And when the perception is that you've only talked to one or two of those sides and purposefully left the others out, then it's not an effective conversation. So the Western Caucus members, um uh, maybe more than some of the other caucuses uh, understand, as you're putting it, that the folks that are most affected by legislation that is uh, formed here on the Hill, they're really the ones who should have the most say. They know where to allocate those dollars, allo use those resources, et cetera. They, sh they certainly should have one of the primary seats at the table when you talk, for instance, in Nevada, a county commission is a very important entity and they should have a lot of participation in that process. And coming up, we're going to have more on the Western Caucus and why my guest says this little known group is hugely important to you in Nevada. We're going to have the details next. You're watching Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, brought to you by Caesars Entertainment, Las Vegas Sands Corporation, the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, and the Energy. Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, the Rogich Communications Group, and Jim Marsh Automotive. Safety, we all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, everything we do. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Harrah's, Caesars Palace. It's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesars Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. This girl is very pretty. It's inciting feelings of jealousy in me. We should pick on her. <laughs> I'm insecure about some things, so I think we should put some new stuff on here. 
Maybe even some lies, too. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to be accepted by you both. So I'm going to send this to my friends so they think I'm cool. <laughs> Kids bully for all kinds of reasons. None of them are good. Find ways to get involved at flipthescriptnow.org. <laughs> Welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of the Western Caucus and how one Nevada leader uses his membership on it to help you. And he's with us today, Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade. So let's look more closely now at just what the Congressional Western Caucus is and does and why it's so important to you in Nevada. Well, the principles of the Western Caucus are based on the idea that stewardship of the environment and natural resources is best accomplished by those closest to that land. It seeks to protect proper, uh, private property, strengthen local control, foster economic growth, preserve multiple use of public land, and increase energy independence. It was established in 19 1993, the caucus works to advance five basic objectives. They are access to energy and mineral resources, state and local land and resources control, private property rights, preservation of multiple use on public lands, and promoting agriculture and forestry in ways that emphasize safe, abundant food production and healthy forests. Now, Congressman, you've been super active ever since uh, coming here, particularly in, in uh, 2011. And you now serve, as we said, as the, the vice chairman. How does your leadership position, your membership on there at all, and now your leadership position on there, how does it help you to help Nevadans? Well, um, the, the vice chairman for policy is, I mean, I've always been a policy guy and less a political guy, um, which is probably good since I'm better at one than the other, I hope. Um, but when you talk about those policies, when you, especially when you represent the West, as, as most of the members do, those policies are important in terms of being fact-based and here's the cause and effect instead of getting wrapped up in a bunch of political spin and messaging and things like that to where um, the policy vice chair position is one that I had asked for because it puts us kind of at the crossroads for what gets elevated to up high on the priority list and, and, and medium, not that we don't care about all of them, but obviously there are things that are big deal in the sage hen, uh, in the in the sage grouse stuff over the last few years has been the western caucus's position number one issue what, what what's after sage grouse well you, you know i mean there's there's a lot of things on there in terms of you know the secretary of interior now has made some statements saying i'm philosophically opposed to the transfer of any public lands it's like well, we need to have that discussion yeah. because nevada has a long history led by the southern nevada public lands management act yeah. which is successful in a conservation sense but also in an economic development sense. So that's one of the ones that's near the top of the list to say, with all due respect, Secretary Zinke, there are instances in histories supported in a very bipartisan way that, that allow this to happen and it should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. We just had a Pershing County land bill heard yesterday that was bipartisan, had a very good hearing. And so it's like, well, if if the Secretary of Interior is philosophically opposed to that, there's a whole bunch of folks in the West that are like, well, I respect that, but there's a history of successful yep. bipartisan work on that, and we'd like to continue it. You know, when people think of the Congress, uh, they, they watch the evening news, they see you in chambers, they see you voting on legislation. We, we've, of course, explained the role of committees and how uh, bills are, are created and, and authored, et cetera. A caucus, though, really exists. Uh, you're, you're kind of got your professor hat on, don't you, in a caucus? You're teaching your, your colleagues about the issues that are important to that caucus. Well, you're doing that in the context of you're trying to magnify your footprint because even though the Western Caucus has members who represent a third or more of the actual area of the United States, mm -hmm. um, we don't have a third or more of the votes because of where the population is. So you have a mission to magnify your effectiveness and a big part of that, as you have said, is educating people who, who live in states whose percentage of private ownership are like 98, 99 plus. So th they don't have a concept of how it is when you're partnering in a majority landowner sense sure. with the federal government, which is run 2,500 miles away in our case. It's 2017, when you look back over the past six years uh, since you not only came here but really joined the Western Caucus, 
How effective do you think you've been able to be on that caucus in, in promoting Western values and Nevada issues? You know, one of the things I ran on in the special election was they said, well, how, you know, asked a similar question to what you just asked. And I said, one of the things is, is I want to get on the Western caucus because, quite frankly, that's how Western issues get magnified and presented to the rest of the caucus and the rest of the Congress. And, and it's been effective that. And as I said at the, at the beginning, I think it stocks on the rise because because Chairman Gosar is doing a heck of a job. Not to, uh, I know you always hate to blow your own horn, but how active was the caucus before you got involved in it? You know, I, I think it ebbs and flows. I mean, and, and some of that's a function of the uh, of the chairperson, but I can tell you this, we have gone, I think, from something where if it's a clear emergency like Pilt mm -hmm. or, or Sage Grouse or something like that, then we always rallied around. But, but I think what you're seeing now is as an operational everyday thing, it, we're out there moving, shooting, communicating, if you will, to use an old army term, um, every day. And so it's, its stock is definitely on the rise. Okay. And just ahead, the congressman takes to social media to protect the reputa uh, reputation of a bill important to Nevada and the West. And that's right after this. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, everything we do. We're not a miracle drug. We're not a technology. We're not doctors. Just the hope, which can often be the best cure of all. The Ronald McDonald House, a home away from home for seriously ill children and their families. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Paris, Caesar's Palace. It's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesar's Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Welcome back to Eye on Washington, our look at efforts to give Nevada more control of Nevada land. We've been visiting with Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade. 
Well, if you visit the congressman's website, you're going to see a consistent theme. In fact, it's right on the site, that quote that says, Nevadans must have a seat at the table. Well, his membership and devotion to the Western Caucus and its issues, particularly those important to you in the state, is one big way he works to ensure Nevada has that voice on Capitol Hill. An example of many of how he fights for you via the Western Caucus is a recent video he did on Facebook aimed at continuing the positive reputation of the Southern Nevada Lands Management Act and other public land swap efforts. That legislation, which was enacted in 1998, allowed for federal land surrounding Las Vegas to be sold via public auction to private developers. Proceeds from sales go to parks and trails, endangered species, conservation initiatives, and more environment-enhancing efforts. Tens of thousands of acres have been added to property taxes that ultimately went to education. Lately, though, naysayers are saying no land should be transferred in the West or elsewhere unless it's transferred to another public entity. In his Facebook speech, the congressman says that's ridiculous and that the Nevada bill shows the huge success of auctioning land to private developers. Now, I watched the video. I encourage my uh, audience to go to amade.house.gov and check it out. What, what were you learning about negative attitudes regarding uh, the, what is likely Nevada's most famous, as you said in our last segment, and most successful ever land swap bills? What were you hearing? Well, uh, you know, th there was a segment that, that was basically saying, hands off all federal land in a state where, where the feds own 86 ish percent of the state. And, and w when you sit there and say, well, to not even discuss the issue, first of all, is not w w what our republic is built on. Sure. It's like, hey, if you've got an idea, then let's talk about it. If it turns out to be a bad idea, if it turns out to be a good idea. Um, but when you sit here with almost a 20-year history with this particular bill, and almost that long with other county lands bill, but that's kind of the, the, the jewel in the crown, if you will, to sit there and say that somehow this is a bad thing, when you look at the track record in Lincoln County, White Pine County, Carson City, Clark County, it's like this is not a, a record of failure and disaster. So it's like if you want to talk about a particular county lands bill that's up, like the one that was yesterday, fine, that's our process and, and welcome to it, everybody's welcome. But to sit there and say, we shouldn't even talk about it is like, wow, where did that come from? <laughs> you know, uh, and the Southern Nevada Public Lands Management Act, we should also again point out that it was very bipartisan. You know, it was uh, it was originated by then Senator Bryan and then uh, Congressman uh, uh, and, and Congressman John Ensign. Uh, and it was a big win for the tax base, for education, the environment, conservation, uh, business people, uh, everyone, correct? Yeah, and, and you described it very well in the lead-in. It's like it does all these things. And by the way, the last time I checked, those are all positive things and you've also hit on the point which was this was all bipartisan stuff it wasn't some evil person from somewhere sneaking in the middle of the night dropping something in very transparent and, and, and let's say there's no substitute for being right and it was right why'd you go to Facebook and and what kind of responses have you gotten well you, that you video? know what it, it hasn't been a great time for me on, on social media but that's okay that's that's part of the job and everybody should have their say uh, but, but you, you know the biggest thing you fight this day is perception over reality and I don't say that disparagingly. I'm just saying that some of the stuff that comes across there is 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 not factual. Mm -hmm. And and so when you're sitting there going, well, the, the facts available to us, unless I've missed them, lead me to this conclusion. But 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 a lot of the tenor these days is I've decided I don't like it or you, and and there I go. And it's like, okay, we'll accept that, but we're going to keep moving on on the issues. Yeah, quickly, because we're almost out of time, getting back to the Western Caucus, do you find that Westerners, uh, people in the Western Caucus, uh, Western members of, of Congress, et cetera, they kind of get the land swap uh, positives better than people who don't have so much federal control? That's exactly right, because they've lived it. And, and that's the challenge of the Western Caucus in, in a very big way is we've got to do the best possible job of, ex of educating our other uh, colleagues on what the realities are. And when we come back, it is mailbag time and Lily Z of Carson City, we chose your letter. That's just ahead. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Paris, Caesar's Palace. It's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesar's Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, 
we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time, and we always want you to leave feeling like you did. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. I got my own iPod Touch and used my dad's login to get on gambling sites. Poker is the best, but I'm losing a lot. Since I'm too young to play, they're not allowed to keep the money and my dad won't find out. That's right, isn't it? Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. A family's presence in the hospital helps children heal faster and cope better. But children who need specialized medical care are often sent out of the Reno area for treatment. Costs can get unmanageable, and it can be difficult for families to accompany their sick child. The Travel for Treatment program, presented by Ronald McDonald House Charities Northern Nevada, gives parents travel assistance when a child's medical treatment is not available at a local hospital. Please contact us today for more information and to see how you can help. Donate online at rmhc-reno.org. caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. And we're back with our closing segment of today's Eye on Washington. It is, of course, our mailbag segment. Time to read one of your letters and ask our guests to respond to you right here on the air. And Congressman, I have a letter to you from Lily Z of Carson City, and she writes, Dear Congressman Amade, I'm interested in the struggle of the Postal Service. What is Congress considering doing about this important service? What do you say? Well, on the House side, Lily, we've got a couple bills that, that seek to protect six-day delivery, um, seek to protect any more of our sorting centers from closing down. We lost one in Elko with a couple folks about four years ago, but our big one in the north is in, is in the Truckee Meadows in Reno. So we've got our eye on that and, and, and are working on that. And the other thing is, quite frankly, the financial struggles are related to whether or not you have the post office assume as a financial liability the benefits in terms of retirement, uh, mostly retirement for carriers. And so we're trying to give them a little more breathing room on that sort of stuff. And, and I'll say to the post office's credit, they're working hard to become more competitive, uh, deliver packages seven days a week, stuff like that. Very much an influx kind of situation, but we're keeping our eye on it with protecting our post offices that we have, the delivery that we have, um, and keeping that part of, for many communities in Nevada, it's, it's, it's a serious part of the fabric of the community. It sounds like Lily, uh, you've got Lily's back. Yeah, All right. <laughs> we're on it. My, gra my great grandmother was a postmistress in oh, Silver City, Nevada, so we're, we're on it. Okay, thanks for being here about all this today. Thank you. You know, you can send a letter to Congressman Amade or another member of the Nevada delegation. Just go to our website, JoyceCommunications.com. And while you're there, check out all the federal issues that impact you in Nevada. You can like us on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and catch up with any shows you may have missed on our YouTube page. Thanks for joining us today on Ion Washington. I'm Marilee Joyce in Washington, D.C. Have a good day.